Hi, my name is Vinay and in this video I would be demonstrating the latest Microwind 3.8 version. Okay, so Microwind is in CMOS layout design and simulation software package and uh, it has a very simple to use and a very short learning curve to understand about the CMOS layout design. So students can make use of this software for learning various kind of designs and make iterative changes and learn the new concepts and improvise their understanding. Okay, so Macmillan starts up with this uh, black screen at the back, which is assumed that is a PTAP substrate or the PTAP wafer. On top of it, you can construct all the remaining layers. So Macmillan has, uh, by default, it starts with 14 nanometer FinFET transistor technology. You can always make changes to that technology and design your own okay so there are lots of menu shortcuts on the palette which is quick to access uh, different layers or simulation inputs or creating components all that stuff I would be explaining uh, the software features one by one but let me start with some design creation so that it's much more easier to understand with the design okay okay so let's take a, a very basic uh, design of CMOS inverter so you can make by click on this MOS generator option so with the help of this you can create uh, FinFET transistors okay so let I use I use the default option that is 2 is the number of uh, pins and the length of the fin is around 60 nanometer okay the amount of drain current produced by this transistor is around 0.229 milliamperes so I generate place on the clipboard so this is how it looks like. So you have a drain on the right or this uh, source at the left or vice versa because it's a bipolar design. On the between, in the between you have the FinFET gate and you see the fins across it. So it's very difficult to make explanation in a top two dimensional view. So instead of that you can click on this 3D button and it will show you a three dimensional view of the same transistor. Okay, so here you see that this you have fins and uh, this is a fin gate, this is the top metal layer and these are the connecting wires in between, okay. You, you, if you want you can remove all, any of the layers and see uh, more in detail if you wish. So this microphone has a three dimensional uh, viewer. So where students can enable or disable different layers and see the effect of it, okay? So this is how the gate looks like and the transfer looks like, okay? So let's continue. Now this is in my NMOS transistor. So uh, if you want to simulate this NMOS, yes, you can do that or we continue with making an uh, inverter. Now this time I want a P-type uh, transistor so I select p-type you can see the current is reduced so that's okay because that is the mobility of the holes which is less in PMOS so you can see that the PMOS is shown in the offline view and you can place it on top of it so that it's better aligned now you have to join these two transistors to make an inverter so I select a metal one layer from the pallet you remember this pallet on the right hand side so you select the metal one layer and draw a block. So you can see that this has been connected. You can double click on this layer and you can see the connectivity. So you can see that the selected layer is highlighted and the rest of the layers are uh, de-highlighted for a better observation and connectivity understanding. So if I select this layer, so only this part is being shown, nothing else. If I select the poly of the NMOS, so it shows only the poly of the NMOS. But now if I uh, click on the fin gate and draw a block in between this thing so both of these gates are connected now if you double click on this yep it shows connected okay now let's quickly make uh, this inverter work in the simulation so I take a VDD supply so these are virtual supply lines so I connect to the end well for the reverse biasing of the body of the PMOS and I select again VDD and connect to the PMOS one terminal. Now this time I take a ground and connect to the bottom side of the NMOS. I take a clock signal and connect it to the gate. Now this clock I can change uh, 
the low period and the high period. So this is a simulation or you can say the stimulus generator. So you can generate various kinds of signals from there, right from the DC supply, clock, pulse signal, sinusoidal or ground or even the piecewise linear signals like this. Like, okay. So the sequence of patterns can be generated from here or you can write the mathematical expressions to generate the kind of signal you desire. Okay. So as of now, I just select the basic clock. Okay, there you are. Now I select the visible node and connect to this node. So you can see that this is S1. Okay, I just say okay S1. So now we can simulate this. Okay. So there you see that yes, it shows high and low going. So the high rise time is around 2.1, the fall time is around 1.6. So that's okay because the fault time is because of the NMOS in mobility, I mean the current of the NMOS was higher than the PMOS, hence lower is the rise time and the fault time are different, okay. So you can see that the power consumed by this design is around 0.5 microwatts, so that's okay. So this is what microwind can do, within few minutes you can see that you have made an inverter and you can make changes to this inverter and understand it in more detail. For example, like you can see the 3D view again. So that's the NMOS what we seen earlier. And here we have a PMOS. Okay. So you can remove the metal layer and see how does it looks. Okay. So this is how it looks. Now let's say you want to just uh, have a stronger influence on the output. So I take a virtual capacitor and place it the output. Let it be value at very small 1.01 picofarad and I start simulation again. So what do you see this time? You see that no, the output is not able to rise and even though it rises after a while, the rise and fall time are very high. The rise time is 27 and fall time is 21 and the power gone up. So that's obvious because there is a higher load because we know the power is proposed to the capacitance as capacitance has increased. So power hasn't gone up, okay. So now let's say some of the designer wants that the rise time and the fall time of the inverter should be less than uh, 10 picosecond or maybe uh, less than 5 picosecond. So you have to design an inverter uh, which can produce and rise and fall time less than 5 picosecond with the same load, with the same load and the same input, you can't change the clock because it's very obvious if I change the clock, so it will easily able to rise and fall time. It will come nice. I mean, you will have better shapes, but still the rise and fall time would be the same. Okay, it's in the same order. So if I want that my rise and fall time should be in an order of, uh, less than 5 picosecond what we can do so we can design redesign the inverter with higher current ratings so we can design the inverter with higher current rating i have already made a video for that so we can have a look uh, on that video okay otherwise i just continue with the other features of the software okay so microwind has various analysis methods like crosstalk evaluation okay so at the click of this you can see how much on the cross stocks are being produced by different nodes on top of each other you can click on global delay evaluation so all the nodes with different delays or the rsic uh, parameters would be shown on this list as of now there are nodes are very less so we can't see much of the list over here then it also has a parametric analysis. You can perform parametric analysis on any of the given node. For example, the effect of, uh, okay, maybe I just remove this virtual capacitance for this. I just remove this, oh, sorry. I, yeah. Okay, so I just reconstruct this. So we can just reconstruct the metal layer and the diffusion. Okay. So I just do the parametric analysis. Okay. So we can do the dissipation, power dissipation effect. Okay. 
on this node if i ask him that okay vary the capacitance of this node from 0 to 100 in a step of 10 femtofarad and show me the effect on maybe for delay okay that's better because we will have a little bit more of gradients so that's what you see in the graphical simulation and also you can see the effect of this so you can see the rise delay the, the fall delay is increasing increasing and after time it feels are decreasing actually it's not decreasing because the software is not able to compute between the entire 10 percent to 90 percent okay so hence it shows like this otherwise this is the maximum point the maximum delay you should observe okay after that it becomes almost a straight line so 60 picosecond okay so this is a parametric analyzer so you can simulate uh, in the simulation graph we have seen the voltage versus time graph the software also shows various other graphs like voltage versus current so here you can see the how much amount of current is being consumed by the various transistors during the entire simulation run. So you can see this peaks coming out which is short circuit power dissipation. Okay. Then you have voltage versus voltage curve. So where you can see the crossover of the design. So it shows 0.386. Ideally it should be sub, uh, half of the supply. Uh, which is in our case should be 0.4 it's slightly lower than 0.4 but that's good because um, the NMOS was having more current hence it is pulled down a little bit towards lower side then you have frequency versus time graph so you can perform various kind of frequency analysis for designs like face lock loop or any oscillator based designs you can verify over here I diagram is a plotting of all the rise and fall delays on top of each other. Okay, so maybe I just reduce it. The scale should be a little bit more lower. Yeah. So he's making all the crossover between all the rise and fall times of the design. So you can see the eye forming between the graph and you can see how you, know, you can compute the noise margins, you can compute the propagation delay. Okay, so these are about the simulation graphs. Okay, so let's continue. So there are some editing commands uh, which you can uh, find uh, yourself. It's very easy to simply use it. All the components like these are generate menu, generate EMOS, MOS, registers, inductors, diodes, capacitors, or the even diode path, all that can be generated. Okay. So uh, I show you one more thing. Okay. Then also Micron has a compile uh, menu. So you can compile logic gates like inverters, NAN, NOR, XOR, or you can even write your own expressions. For example, I write A is equal to not of B and just say compile. So he will create an uh, inverter for me. So it's a very symmetric design. So you can see that it places the VDD lines and the VSS line on top of each other, parallel to each other. And in between these two lines, he places a PMOS and an NMOS in between. You have to just uh, double click these the inputs, make it as an uh, clock and visible in simulation. Double click on A and make it visible in simulation so that you can see that's it and you just run the simulation. So it's quite easy to make uh, simple designs in Macron. Yeah. So you can see the rise and fall time are almost the same order. Okay. Yeah. So the power consumption is around 0.8 microwatts of this design. You can even take the picture of this or you can dump all these files and then the simulation plot in an Excel file. So it will store in the default folder where it is being uh, working. The file is working. By default this is in the program files folder. So it will be dumping over there or you can file, save the file in somewhere in downloads or desktop and then just dump the file in Excel 
and you can plot it, make beautiful charts for your reports, and etc. Macron can even compile a Verilog file for big and complex design and can simulate this. For example, you can just uh, browse it to C drive and simulate program files. So you can generate that from your companion software DSCH. So I just see if it has something in ready. We are full header. So I just say compile. So this is a compile menu. I would be making a separate video on how to make use of this. But yes, you can uh, do various kind of placement optimization, routing optimization. You can just uh, resize the sizing requirement of the design, everything. So you just say compile. And he will compile the full header for you. So that's easy it is. So as you can see, this is a full header design. So it has brought all the metal lines for interconnecting the entire circuit to each other. By default, Micron also applies some square waves to the inputs. If you wish to keep them, then it's okay. Otherwise, you can just make changes and apply as per like. For example, I just double click on every one of them and uh, reuse it to half. So this is A, B and C. If you wish, you can also see the Micron in uh, black and white. So if you just uh, press Ctrl W and it will change the screen. Or you can just go to File and say Colors, uh, White Background. So it shows the background is uh, whitened and you can see the layout still in color. Then you can simulate also. So it shows uh, much more beautiful over in the layout. This is my personal preference. I like it this better. Okay, so probably I should not slow down that much. Okay, so we restart the simulation. So I just remove this delay value. Ah, so then we do not plot this, so we can measure this. So here we can see that yes this full header works so this is sum and carry outputs they come as a pulse okay you can change this uh, step size so that your simulation is much more faster you might lose some accuracy but that's okay because some of the pulses might be missed so if you're not expecting any pulses or spikes coming up you can increase the step size so your simulation runs much more faster so if you just play this step size it can be good for bigger design okay so this is how the half oh sorry full error comes up so it shows the power consumption of the design that's okay so microwind comes along with numerous designs available for your learning for example okay uh, before showing example, I just change the foundry. So I just go to select foundry, file select foundry, and Macron comes along with numerous uh, rule files like in nanometer in 90, 65, 45, 32, till 40 nanometer. And on the higher side, you have 0.12 micron or 0.6 micrometer, like that. So if I select CMOS 012, so there is 0.12 micrometer technology you can see in the bottom. Now I just look for some of the ready examples, okay. So Macron comes along with various rule files categorized into different formats like uh, face lock blue, uh, multiplexer, oscillators or adders, basic gates, FTC based, inductor based or interconnects, inverters, IOs, latches, uh, memories, various, various uh, numerous examples. There are more than 200, 300 examples in this folder. And apart from that, you can always request us to design something new and creative and we can make it for you. Okay, so like this is analog design examples. Okay, let me take something, uh, okay, maybe PLO and uh, there's a VCO. Okay, so there we have voltage control oscillator. So you see a, a chain of inverters in between. And the feedback from here output is given to uh, PMOS and uh, NMOS current mirrors uh, who decides how much amount of input should be applied the reference voltage 
to the current which is injected in the inverter series so accordingly he manipulates the oscillating frequency you can change the color background so for better visualization some people like in black some people in white i like in uh, white better so here you can see this is the reference voltage being applied so you can see the frequency increases and the decreases but it's difficult to observe in this uh, voltage versus time plot so instead of that i go to frequency versus time plot so there you can see that as it's, it is plotting the v high which is the output so it's plotting v high so you can see the frequency rises and then again decreases so that is because the control voltage we have increased and then decreased so we can say that the center point of the vcu is around 2.5 gigahertz and min max you can see it's around 2 gigahertz should be good to define it okay below than that it will not oscillate properly okay. so that's in vcu design it's very simple inverter based design which anyone can make and uh, simulate this Apart from that, uh, Micron also has numerous designs. Okay, let's take PLL again. So, yeah. so I can show in both colors. So this is how you see that on the right hand side is the same VCO what we used just now, which has um, oscillating frequency of 1.8 to 2.8 gigahertz. And what is being done is the feedback is being taken from here and applied to an XOR gate, okay, which works as a uh, phase detector. So a reference clock input is being provided, which is around 2.4 gigahertz, okay, and output is being RC filtered. You can see a virtual resistor over here and a virtual capacitor over here. So this both uh, filtered the XOR output, or in fact XOR, uh, XOR output, and apply it to VCO because we don't want the input of the VCO is very jittery it has to be a very smooth input so that the output oscillation happens very slowly and here you see an NMOS which works as a print or as a pull up uh, of the output of this filtered output because uh, this has to be brought to the half of the supply voltage during the power up so and the power up pull up is being applied over here so we just simulate this so you can see that uh, this is the print input so it just pulls up the vc which is the control voltage so you can see that if we don't apply this one so our vc will rise in very very slow uh, time it will take a lot of time to rise it to the half of the supply so that's why we apply a pull up and the output uh, is vc is pulled up to half of the supply in no time after that it's the XOR kicks in the phase detector so that is your XNOR output okay that is being uh, XOR that is inverted and then given to filtered VC okay so this is a VC which is varying okay and this is your output which needs to be tried but it's very difficult to observe from this plot so uh, better we can go to frequency versus time graph so there you can see that V high so the initial frequency is very less so he's trying to track 2.4 but he will maintain to around 1.9 yeah so he will maintain the oscillation frequencies around 1.9 gigahertz okay. so if we go for more simulation so you can see that this one so it's a very basic PLL design so you can see that the oscillation frequency varies from 1.95 to 1.89 94 188 so that is a clock cycle to clock cycle uh, frequency variation known as jitter so that's what we you can observe now you can as a student can work on this to how to improvise the jitter in the phase lock loop design okay so that's what we can you can work on this and improvise this phase lock loop design so you can see that in very few minutes i demonstrated few examples we case studied the uh, PLL even and uh, uh, we have came across various features of the software okay so uh, macron plays a very important role in uh, understanding the cmos layout design so it allows you to learn the concepts of cmos in a very very short learning curve hence macron has been very popular and very playing a very important role in engineering education okay 
you can write uh, to us for any questions or doubts or for more videos to follow through. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this video.